anytime I have a story question that's a lot of lines, a lot of numbers, my first instinct is, can I do this backwards? Can I guess and check? That might make it easier because then I don't need to create some big elaborate equation. I can just kind of do things one at a time. So my eye is kind of drawn to the end. What is the What do the answer choices represent? Which of the following is closest to the maximum possible price per chair before sales tax the business owner could pay based on this budget? So this is the price of a chair. So when I look at the question, what do they want to do to these chairs, right? A business owner plans to purchase the same model of chair uh, for each of the 81 employees. The total budget is 14000 and there's a 7% sales tax. So it really does make sense to just guess and check here because that's going to let us multiply, right? This is the price per chair. We know that there are 81 employees, so we need 81 of these. So I would start with choice B and multiply it by 81. And I would do that because I like the letter B. I want to start with a number in the middle in most cases because it helps me understand like, okay, if it's big, if it's too big or too small, uh, if it's wrong, then I can adjust based on that. And I think that most of you just pick the letter C and uh, that's your default. So for me, I want to be different and I choose B. That's literally as much thought as I put into it, but I do always choose B. And then I would use my calculator here. I'd use my scientific calculator to do 161.53 times 81 for the 81 employees. And that gets me a messy kind of number. Uh, 1,300, ooh, no, sorry, $13,083.93. I'm not rounding anywhere. This is what it comes out to. Now that is the total amount of the 81 chairs, but we have a 7% sales tax. So I'm going to multiply this number by 1.07 and the reason I'm doing that is to account for I want the to include the 13,000 and change that I already have and then add another 7% onto that so it's 1 plus the 0 0.07 um, and this is something that you could use the open formula for in a in a, in a kind of sidebar um, but I'm gonna skip that just for the sake of kind of getting to the point here and we multiply by 1.07 and we get $13,999.81 and what we needed to get was 14,000 right that's the maximum number that's the total budget so this is below it but it's just below it right what is that 19 cents below so this is the answer. I don't have to do any more. It's definitely not going to be 172, right? Because if I increase the price of a chair by whatever that is, $11, it's going to increase the total cost with the tax and everything, all the multiplying by way more than 19 cents. So I know going higher is not going to do it. It's going to go over the budget. So I'm just done. Now, if I were wrong, right, if, if choice B didn't work, I would see why. I would be like, oh, this is way too low. It's, it's much lower than 14000 so I need to go higher cost per chair, um, something like that. Um, but I definitely think this is better than devising an equation to start. I just, not that the equation is particularly hard. It would be something like um, uh, 81x times 1.07 is less than or equal to 14,000. It's not that hard. It's a little multiplication, inequality, whatever. But I don't know. It just feels unintuitive. My brain does not work that way. My brain does not go into a store and say, I have $14,000. Which chair, when solved for X, uh, 81X times 1.07 is going to work for me, sir, who works at the store and probably doesn't know what I'm even talking about. They're not going to know. This is a crazy way to exist in the world. So we don't think that way when we do real life stuff. So we probably shouldn't think that way when we do math on the SAT. What we do think about is like, okay, a chair costs $161.53. I need 81 of those. How much is that going to cost, right? That's intuitive. So working backwards, guessing and checking often lets us take the algebra out of, this, uh, out of the picture and get back to the kind of math that we do in the everyday world. So don't be afraid to do that. You do not get bonus points on the test for doing it the way that your math teacher would want you to do it. You only get points for getting the answers. So get the answer in the most efficient way possible.